over the next couple of days. Some very crazy things are about to happen. And the situation that we got going on for ourselves is seriously unlike anything we've ever seen before. And guys, I'm talking about the fact that we are on the verge of a major collapse. And please don't take this lightly. Over the next couple of months, many people could lose their jobs, many people could lose all their money. And I think one of the only solutions is going to be crypto. And you might be wondering, hey, what is that you're holding right there? This is designer water, Avian Balmain water. And you might go ask yourself, why did you buy this water? Well, <laughs> it's better than uh, keeping your money in the bank, right? <laughs> Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Anyway, guys, make sure that you press that like button. And especially if you're a crypto holder right now, things are about to get so freaking exciting. I can't even explain to you guys just how crazy things are about to get. So again, if you are a crypto holder, make sure you press that like button. And let me just also quickly say, if you're looking for a place to trade on, there's a link for Bybit down below. It's the exchange that I personally use. To start off, and remember guys, this is just the start. I'll be explaining a lot of really crazy things that are happening right now throughout this video, so make sure you watch it all the way through. And I'm also thinking, because cryptos are going up like crazy, to give you guys about $1,000 worth of a giveaway. So let me know down below if you guys would appreciate that. I think we'll do it at the end of this month. Anyway, what you're seeing right in front of you is the next FOMC meeting. Now, at this meeting, they basically provide us the new interest rate over in the US. And again, it is roughly four days away. The the reason that this is such an important event is because a couple of days ago, they released the inflation numbers and that same day, the crypto space went absolutely crazy. As you guys all know, inflation and the interest rate numbers are extremely important numbers for trading, but they also reflect the overall health of the economy in a specific country. And one thing we're noticing right now is that, uh, yeah, in that specific country, which is called the US of A, things are not necessarily doing very good right now. So John Deaton wrote out a little bit of a contagion threat. So first we had Silvergate collapsing and in its wake we had the silicon valley bank in its wake yet again we had the crypto bank signature after which came first republic which was extremely interesting because jim kramer who we always do the exact opposite of he actually was extremely bullish on it so that was kind of an interesting one Afterwards came Credit Suisse. And again, I'm just talking about banks that are in a lot of trouble. And now yesterday came out a report that another additional 186 similar banks might be in a situation akin to that of Silicon Valley Bank. In a matter of days, the Fed erased half, about 270 or something, $280 billion of the now, I don't want to finish my sentence here. Let me just show you. Federal Reserve, oh, let me put it into the perspective real quick. Federal Reserve lent $300 billion in emergency funds to banks in the past week. Nearly half the money, $140 billion, went to holding companies for two major banks that failed over the past week, Silicon Valley and Signature Bank. Triggering widespread alarm in the financial markets, the Fed did not identify the banks that received the other half of the funding or say how many of them did so. To continue on, of the QT is uh, it implemented during the last year. So they're erasing the tightening. And John Deaton says, I believe this will be Bitcoin's moment when history books are written. And just to put it into perspective, let's quickly listen to this video right here. And if you look at the balance sheets of the banks, virtually none of them are sitting on enough cash to back demand deposits that can be withdrawn in the, at the speed of minutes now. So here's the thing. It used to be you, you, have to, you had to go to a bank branch and fill out a paper form to make a bank d withdrawal. Now you can do it on your phone. What's interesting is that the bank regulators have for a long time hated the most tech forward banks. They like <laughs> the concept that everything has to be analog because it slows everything down. Just yesterday, the Fed confirmed that FedNow, which is the new payment system that is ultimately going to replace yeah. FedWire, is coming online in July. And it's a 24-7, 365 system. And there was a lot of information in the press release about the testing requirements that the banks that are going to be rolling it out in July will have to comply with. There was zero acknowledgement 
that the speed of money movement is going to increase inherently when you get a real-time system. So we were talking about how long it takes for you to put the payment instruction in, analog versus online banking or API. But now there's also speed up of settlement once the instruction is received by the bank. And that is going to be real time. Now, Fed now only limits you to $100,000 at a time, but $100,000 at a time equals, a, equals increased bank run risk inherently. And I was floored that the Fed said nothing in that press release about requiring the banks that are going to be offering Fed now to hold more liquidity. It means they don't get it yet. And now one thing we could pretty easily do here is relate this back to how Ripple has partially fixed this problem with the on-demand liquidity. And actually a lot of things that Ripple has been doing has been basically it seems better thought out than a lot of what the US has been doing. And to prove that, I'd like to show you this. An absolute sin. I can't blame Coinbase because it must do what makes sense. The leadership in DC will go down in history as a cancer on American innovation and consumerism. And that is as a response to Bloomberg reporting that Coinbase is talking to clients about starting a new trading platform overseas as the US environment for digital asset companies continues to sour. Again, the US is just not having the best approach towards anything right now. And honestly, if you think it's only limited to the US, you'd also be crazy. I mean, this is a crisis on a global level for sure. We've seen now, and hopefully you guys have seen it, the situation with Trump, the situation with Putin, and I don't want to go too far into those right now over on YouTube, but they're pretty crazy. That's going to be a freaking crazy turmoil over the next couple of days. Uh, but as we said just earlier, the whole situation with Credit Suisse here, if not even a bailout from the central bank and save Credit Suisse, then it's beyond saving. And this, the, the, the ripple effects of this are going to be so ununderstandable, so to speak. And Plan B also uh, noted here, this is worse than COVID, similar to GFC, protect yourselves. And he basically inched to buy Bitcoin to save yourself from all this, which honestly seems to be what's happening, right? We've seen the crypto space go up a whole lot over the last week or so here after all this talk of major crashes uh, had basically started. And now I don't want to bore you guys with another four minute video right here. But all you need to understand from this is that right now the talks of all these deposits and ratios is all of a sudden becoming the next big thing. But a question that might pop up in your head is where was all this discussion like the last decade and a half? Because it's not as if anything crazy has changed. It's just a very big discussion right now about all the uninsured depositors, etc., and how they're gonna fix that and what should be the rules surrounding that, etc. And honestly, I've seen a lot of people now say that Bitcoin is the big move and, well, it's time for another crazy revolution of sorts or just a, well, major crash that's gonna push Bitcoin adoption to some crazy degree. Anyway, on the opposite side, there's also good parts to this, right? We have, for example, in Colorado, them uh, planning or at least accepting Bitcoin and crypto for tax payments by the end of the summer, uh, summer <laughs> the governor police said. And we also have uh, some massive article that Microsoft is apparently through their edge, right? Re uh, reportedly building a crypto wallet for the Edge browser, which if you guys remember, and hopefully you do, I have a little while ago, I think a couple months ago, maybe a year or two ago, I predicted for you guys the major bull run factors, which would be that one of the top companies like an Apple, like a Samsung, like a Microsoft, would finally say like, hey, you know what? Let's stop with all this chitty chatter. Let's go absolutely haywire and, and dive fully into it, specifically with building a wallet. And if you think about it, it's quite ironic that uh, Mr. Gates does not really like crypto, he's been saying yet. They're looking into a wallet for it because they know the potential. It's again, one of those situations where in your face, they're telling you no, 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 but in the back end, they're building on it. It's the similar way the banks have been doing it for a while. We've seen almost every major bank out there adopt this technology, work on it, while in your face stating that they don't like it. I should post up another little side note here, which is I try to filter through all the best information. And guys, trust me when I say that right now, it is extremely difficult to find out information regarding these banks that's accurate and correct. For example, what your guru first said, $10 trillion asset manager BlackRock to bid for Credit Suisse uh, takeover, FT reports, but apparently later it has been denied. I've seen extremely many of these types of articles here recently where there's a crazy headline because it grabs a lot of attention and because it's FUD on top of FUD on top of FUD, everybody is uncertain and then it later being debunked or we just know it's not true. 
Anyway, if we go back to summarizing the major problem, it's just that people get scared. People might run for their money, and we have a lot of money that's above the $250,000 threshold. So people with more than this amount of money are gonna probably take it out, which is generally speaking the majority of the money, and then you get a little vicious cycle of, of just bad stuff happening. And to get back on topic though, I should also add that right here. We've talked earlier with what we think is going to happen to Bitcoin. We've talked about where we see the dominance going because it keeps retesting this little area at roughly 48%. We think that is necessary for Bitcoin to reach that area before altcoins can go on a crazy tangent, on a crazy run, as that's generally speaking what happens. Bitcoin takes a lot of its dominance back and slightly afterwards altcoins go on a crazy rush. And in terms of price, I'm going to simply tell you guys here and, and put it here that the majority of us right now are expecting that the bull run is back, right? We have crossed above the 200 weekly moving average. We have closed on the daily above the 200 weekly moving average. Now, if we want it to be perfect, then over the next couple of hours, we actually close in the green, which would mean that we close above $27.35,000. And that is just to prevent some of the moves that we saw earlier throughout, uh, I guess, the middle half of 2022, the summer months of 2022. We've had a couple of breakouts above the 200 weekly moving average before breaking back down. And right here, by just closing above that key level, we're basically setting a new milestone that we have not seen for a very, very long time. And in my opinion, that would basically secure our bullish market. Then again, I'll readdress something for you guys briefly here as well. And that is that really, for the most part, Bitcoin has been pumping in cycles right now on the on the chart here. We're a little bit further. We're roughly here. I believe right about where my mouse is pointing right now. Again, slightly below the $35,000 level and between 2022 and March of 2024, slightly biased to the right. And what we've seen from history is that every single time we're in this section, which right now it has proven correct for thus far, right? Because I mean, the blue zone started, let's say at the end of 2022 somewhere. And if we reflect on it, indeed, at the end of 2022, in November of 2022, you know, the, the lowest point came and things are starting to pick themselves up. Again, to put it into perspective, the Bitcoin price has already moved up roughly 90% or so since the bottom. And so that reflects quite literally what we've seen here. Anyway, so the price has been pumping up, but in this blue little section, which is gonna still go on for about a year or so, we're basically going to get to crazy heights in terms of price. Potentially not the all-time high breaker just quite yet, that would happen in the next phase after March 2024, but at least it is very bullish territory. At least history has spoken for that. And I personally quite believe the probability of this happening yet again is ridiculously high. So again, guys, I am extremely bullish on crypto. And again, let me tell you guys two things. One, if you're enjoying these daily crypto videos, make sure you press that like button. It is greatly appreciated. And if you're looking for a place to trade crypto, then the link down below, I have a link to Bybit, which is the exchange that I personally use and get up to $30,000 worth of bonuses and a couple other cool things. So just make sure you check it out with the link down below. It's the place that I trade on. And right now I have a crazy Bitcoin position open that I've had open since $21,700, which I've already explained to you guys in great detail as to why I did that. But to quickly elaborate on it again, Again, there were a couple major zones that we were watching the Bitcoin price for, $21.7,000, $20,000, and $17,700. There's a couple ones between $20,000 and $17,700, but these were our major targets. We opened one trade at $20,000, but took some quick profit, which actually was a little bit more of a miss input, as afterwards we had to open our position again at $21,700. Unfortunately, a little bit on the high side, but on the more secure side. And right now that trade is up 25%. But of course we trade with leverage over on Bybit. So yeah, things are uh, are definitely pretty nice. Anyway, that was it for today's little crypto video. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed it. And I'll be back tomorrow. And one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I have a video every single day at the exact same time. I'm thinking of making it 12 p.m. Dubai time, which is 8 a.m. UK time, 9 a.m. Um, Netherlands time, just get all the news out at that exact moment and then potentially do more videos throughout the day, but just one consistent thing so you guys can know that at that point exactly, a video is gonna be dropped at like 12, 15 p.m. every single day or 11.45 or something like that. I'll think about it, but yeah, that's gonna be something cool. Again, guys, see you later in another one. Hopefully you all enjoyed it and uh, wow, it's gonna be crazy, guys. It's gonna be absolutely crazy.